So this is it. The champ. So today is the day. The big one. The Champions League final. And I cannot believe that we are here for it. But getting to a Champions League final is not the best thing that has happened to me today because I've had this lovely package arrive from FMFC. If we uh, just open it up, what have we got inside? Well, we've got a lovely little note from Warchild and we have got inside, oh, look at this. This is one of the limited edition bespoke Hummel shirts made for Foot Manager and for their charity partner, War Child, as you can see on the sponsor. This week is War Child's Sporting Champions Week, where they are raising money for War Child through various different means online. There's a Steam sale where you can buy plenty of games, but there's also plenty of live streams going on with loads of creators. And I am doing one of those live streams on Saturday from 1 pm over on twitch.tv slash tomfm. A link to my channel is down in the description. I'm going to be playing as War Child FC. We have no players in the team, but a budget of 750 million, so we've got to try and buy some players quickly to do well in the league so I'm gonna need your help for that one anyone who donates money to war child during the live stream or actually at any time at all I'll leave a link in the description to the donation page you can start contributing to the war child effort already anyone who donates money via my link will be entered into a Tom FM giveaway to win a copy of football manager 2022 when the game comes out whenever the game comes out. Just make sure when you put down your name, like your Twitter at or your Twitch username or your Discord name, so I know I can contact you if you are lucky enough to win. But these beautiful shirts are also available to buy. You may have noticed on the homepage of Football Manager, there's a little uh, link about it essentially. Click that link and you can go straight to the War Child website to purchase one of these limited edition kits and they are absolutely gorgeous. So hopefully I will see you on Saturday for the live stream. We're going to have a lot of fun. Make sure you get donating as well. And if we win the Champions League in today's episode, I'm also going to donate £50 as well as a, you know, it's my prize money. I'm donating my prize money from winning the Champions League. I'm going to donate it to War Child. That, that's how we're going to spin it. Hello and welcome back to On The Rocks. Hope you're all doing well today and looking forward to today's episode where I am wearing my new War Child shirt, although I have realized that the collar is literally the exact same shade of green as the green screen behind me. So, I mean, it just looks like my neck is not connected. It's actually quite amusing, but also a little bit off-putting. Get used to it. Today, we've got the chance to make history. We could. Become the Invincibles by beating Celtic in the final league game of the season. We could win a third Scottish Cup and we could win our first Champions League. Alternatively, we could lose all of them and then a um, bit of a wasted time this episode. But it's a big one, so make sure you do drop a like on today's video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and make sure you leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. This video is also going out as a premiere, so if you are here watching it quote-unquote live... Hello to everyone in the chat. Hope you're all doing well and looking forward to it. I want to see some score predictions in the chat and if you think we're going to win all three games or fail at some point. Before we get into the first game against Celtic, as you would expect, because we are about to become invincibles, hopefully you would have known that we have won our two games in between episodes. A 2-1 win against Hibs, which we almost lost to be fair. Jan Cavalcanti scoring two goals late on to make sure we didn't lose that game before we beat Hamilton 2-0. In terms of the league table, we are on a 105 points which is mental. Celtic moved up to second on 77 because Rangers have been in abysmal form recently. Uh, you can see here just not been able to win games for the past two months, two three months really so poor from Rangers. And finally one more bit of news. I'm not sure it's good news or not. Reports are coming in that there's been a breakthrough in the Aberdeen takeover talks led by Asa Ralston. And apparently, a breakthrough could be a matter of days away. So, potentially, we could have some new owners in today's episode as well. So, let's get into this first game against Celtic. Make sure we avoid defeat and we are the Scottish Invincibles this season. Fuentalba in goal as usual with a backline of Passos, Admilson, Rebull and Alex Sandro. Sissoko and Tam Lumpert join up in the midfield 
with an attacking midfield of Lacruz, Cavalcanti and Alien with Shaban leading the line. So kickoff is upon us and immediately a chance for Celtic. Fuentalba collects the free kick beautifully though and clears it out from the back and we win it. Lassie Alien on the ball looking to come forward into the area. Can he square it or shoot? He shoots and really should have squared it I think in that instance so the highlight comes to its conclusion. This season has been absolute dominant. I can't believe how good we have been this season. I mean we are literally this game away from being invincible and who would have thought that at the start of the season following the departure of Caio Henrique and sending our back line into absolute shambles but what it does do is just show how good Passos is and how good he was coming into the team and how invaluable he's been ensuring up that back line. Also, of course, Rodriguez, before he got recalled back to Atletico Madrid because of injury, has been insane as well. Shows how good he was. But also, it just shows how capable Rebuel, which I can't really say properly still, shows how good he's been this season. I guess I'd, I guess I've gone through the whole back line now. It just shows how good our back line have been. I've, I'm right. If they'd scored, that would have been just poetry, right? So, to the team, thank you. Congratulations to you lot for being absolutely superb. Even if we do end up losing to Celtic on the final day of the season, and I will cry if that happens because I don't think I've ever actually done... I don't think I've actually done it. An undefeated season. And this could be the first time I've ever been in... bit. No, it's a lie. I did it once in... Uh, what was it called? What was, what was it? It's my own series. What was it called? I mean, I oh, was scoring now. Jan Cavalcanti scores. That penalty was a bit weird. What was the series called? Well, we played with Partizan. Around the block. How could I forget that? Around the block. We did have an undefeated season with Partizan. But that's the only time I've ever done it. Hopefully, we're going to do it again right now. Oh, it hits the post. That penalty. Not a great angle, this one, unfortunately. But the penalty hit the post and bounced in. Maybe another chance for us to come forward just before half time as Le Cruz on the ball. Come on, lad. Get something in the area for us. As he gets it into Lassie Alien, into Shaban. Ha! Oh, beautifully worked goal there. 22nd of the season for Shaban. 2-0. Jan Cavalcanti on the ball. He's been quite quiet to date so far. Not seen much of him and his 37 goals this season. I say that, he scored a penalty early, didn't he? So actually, he has scored a goal and he's got another chance to make it too as he gets another penalty. Come on, Jan, score it. He does. And what, is that 38 or 39 now? 41. What do I know? Apparently not enough about my players. 41st goal of the season. And so with that, like we, we have to basically now be the invincibles. I can't see us losing this 4-3 now. Unless, of course, Celtic get their act together and score now which they nearly do Whoa, they nearly nearly do that was so so close Sandro on the ball for us into the middle cleared out from the back but Tam McLumper into Sissoko into La Cruz lovely passing a lovely pass back to La Cruz and Jan Cavalcanti picks up his hat trick 4-0 the clock though is ticking down and with it we are going to finish off the season as invincibles absolutely incredible not lost a single league game this season emphasis on the league because we did lose in the betfred cup so that's the the only game we've lost this season is the betfred cup second round on penalties it's so frustrating but domestically in the league we are the invincibles but annoyingly i've not got an achievement for it so maybe the game doesn't think we are invincible which is really upsetting as well but we finish off the season on 108 points with 102 goal difference that is absolutely phenomenal and there we go the news article does say Aberdeen completes invincible season so the game does recognize we have been invincible in the league which is fantastic and also a lovely four and a half million pounds in prize money that keeps going up year on year on year because I think in the first season the first place team in the league only got like two million so great to see the money increasing so now we've got a week off until we play Celtic again deja vu but a different setting for the Scottish Cup final. So I guess as well we are sort of waiting to find out if the takeover is going to happen at all. Uh, that would be quite exciting. Uh, let me know in the, in, the, in the live chat right now if uh, I pointed the wrong way there. The live chat's there. But let me know in the live chat if you're watching it live. Am I going to get a sack do you think? If, if, if Imagine right? Imagine if a takeover happens the day before the Champions League and they're like by the way, we're bringing a new manager in right now, so off you pop, and the new manager plays the Champions League. I, I don't know what I'd do. 
Oh my god, what if that happens? I am now scaring myself into thinking that could happen. But before any news on that, we have the Scottish Cup final. I'm going to keep the team the exact same as it was because, oh, I can't because we've got to have a keeper on the bench apparently because of the Scottish Cup rules. So sorry, Mike Taggart, off you go. Bazunu on the bench. Um, submit the team. Let's go to this game. <sighs> Let's win it. So, deja vu, here we are once again playing Celtic. Uh, hopefully, deja vu off the scoreline as well. Corner for us, Cavalcanti into the middle, and Milson can't win it, but Lassie Alien does collect the clearance out from the back. Into Tamat Lumper, into Jan Cavalcanti. Jan Cavalcanti into Sissoko, who gets it out wide to Passos on the left hand side into Sissoko. Sissoko in the middle, cleared out by the defence, not really beating the first man there. But Passos has it back on the left hand side. Cuts, it's, it's a penalty. It really is deja vu. It really is deja vu, as hopefully we open up the scoring with a penalty. Jan Cavalcanti scores his third penalty against Celtic in two games, 43rd of the season. Beautiful. And come on, let's get a second goal. Let's get one hand on that trophy. There we go. One hand on the trophy already. 26 minutes into the game, immediately scoring another one. Jan Cavalcanti getting that one from the throw-in. It's a great goal. Too easy this now, isn't it? Too easy. How do we turn the difficulty up? If only there was such a way we could do it. We have dominated Scotland now. Like Scotland, big tick. We are just the best team in Scotland, hands down. Apart from when it comes to the bet for a cup, because we... We keep, we keep getting knocked out of that in the second round. The clock, though, is ticking down with only 15 or so minutes to go. Uh, I don't really feel any need to make subs because we've got a nice week off before the next game. So give these boys a full 90 minutes to really properly gel together nicely, play together well, and hopefully they just know what they're going to do against PSG. I mean, I am terrified for the next game. A Champions League... I don't understand how we're there, if I'm honest with you. Like... I don't think we're ready yet as a team. We really aren't. We're, we're not the best team in the world or Europe or anything like that. We've had quite a nice draw in our favour. And we have really good tactics that help us win. And our play, we've got some very world-class players in the team as well. But it's not like it's... I guess it's just a very good, well-gelled team. Like, I don't know, like a, like a Wales from a 2016 European Championships one star player in Bale, ours is Jan Cavalcanti. Everyone else is a bit average slash mm, okay, but Team Spirit takes them all the way to the semi finals. Right, well, wasn't quite expecting that to happen. I finished my sentence and thought, right, this highlight's gone on long enough, nothing's going to happen here. Um, Boy was what was fun? Why did he not just collect it with his hands? <laughs> what on earth have we just seen there? Okay, uh, Celtic coming back into it just a little bit at the end of this game, but uh, as the clock ticks down, a brief scare could go a little bit further if they. Oh no! Oh no! I, we don't want to do extra time, boys. Sissoko, great challenge. Okay, right, hold on to the ball for ninety seconds. Don't pass it back to Fuentealba though, because he will mess it up like last time. Apparently, as. Uh, Celtic win the ball. Right, if they score now, oh, Tam Lump has got himself sent off. If that's the, if that's what the highlight's for, that's fine. Um, oh, Jesus Christ, Tam. It'll be fine. It'll be fine for for what sixty seconds. It should be fine. Right, if they score from this, oh no, highlights. Oh, the, the game's finished easy. Okay, Tam Lump has sent off. Uh, he knew he had to do it. Basically, a hero, Tam Lump. He had to do it to stop them scoring. That's how we'll frame it. We've won another Scottish Cup. You love to see it. So, invincible in the league. Scottish Cup winners. Can we make it a hat-trick today? Is the Champions League possible? You will be pleased to know that Jan Cavalcanti has won the Scottish Players Player of the Year. He's also won the Scottish Football Writers Player of the Year and won the Scottish Premiership Top Scorer of the Year award as well. But who are these two backups? Or I say backups. Who's come second and third? Harvey Vale. Let's scout him out, because if, they, if he's scoring plenty of goals, they might be worth looking at. And then Phil Malcolm as well. Finn Malcolm, I should say, also. Nice one. Oh, and also Jan Cavalcanti wins Scottish Players Young Player of the Year award. And the Scottish Football Writers Young Player of the Award as well. He's had a clean sweep of all the awards. And he's also in the best team of the season as well. 
as are virtually all of our players. In fact, it's just Le Cruz and Rebull who are missing. Seems pretty harsh on those boys. Oh, and it's also nice to live that Yannick Cavalcanti has dedicated all four of his awards to me. Um, all four of them, you love to see it. Me and him are like this, you know, we're like this. Until it comes to contract negotiations, and then it's all out the window then, apparently. Oh, also, as you can see, uh, we've got seven players called up for the European Championships this summer. Pavlik for the Czech Republic, Passos for Portugal, Bazunu for Ireland, McLumper, McRae and Jess Finley for Scotland, and Shaban for Serbia. And then when it comes to the Copper America, Fu and Talbot for Chile, and then Admilson and Cavalcanti for Brazil. Hopefully, some of these boys can bring back some silverware for this summer. Well, I don't know where I was going with that. For what? For us? It's not really for us, is it? I hope they win it for their sake. But days before a Champions League final, Lewis Ferguson wants to discuss about playing more games. Not now, Lewis. Not now. This is far too important. I mean, what do I say to him? What do I say in this situation? I'll play in cup competitions, thinking you mean Champions League. No, okay, right. Um, he wants to go to the next step in his career. He wants us to be here. But, I mean, he's a good player. I do like Lewis Ferguson. Um, and he has played 18 games this season in the league, like uh, quite a few overall. I'd like to keep him around, but... If we could get £13 million for him, I wouldn't say no to that either. I might tell him he can go. Because that, you know, reverse psychology. Um, or let's just say, be a squad player. Oh, he can be a, he's happy to be a squad player. Okay, well that solves everything, doesn't it? Hold a team meeting. Oh, do I do that? I don't know what I'd... Actually, no, this should be pretty easy, right? Um, because we're not expected to win. So just ease expectations. Everyone's hyping this game up. But don't pay attention to that. It's just another game as far as we're concerned. Oh, God, that's, that has backfired. Actually, no, it hasn't. Only Ad Milson disappointed. Everyone else is content and encouraged. And Harry Winks is very happy with that. As is uh, Brian Port. Unfortunately, they're not playing. Um, it's a good reaction overall. Has it improved morale at all? Done nothing to it. No, they're all very good already, actually, so actually I shouldn't have even risked that. So, for this game, uh, we're not going to change the lineup, but we are going to change formation. We have to drop back a little deeper and more defensive against PSG. Like, we, we can't not do it, right? We have to go a bit more defensive. It worked against Dortmund. It worked against AC Milan. I'm praying it works now. The team, unchanged. You know it off by heart already, I'm sure. For one final time this season, for the Champions League final, <sighs> crazy. So as the players come out of the tunnel and kickoff is upon us, I do want to reiterate that even if we do win this, this is not the end of On The Rocks. The aim is to try and get to number one in Europe, the Scottish League that is, of course. And that's what we're going to try and do. So winning today helped us on our aim. So don't think because if we win, it's the end of a series. It's not. We're going to carry on. But this would be, I think, the quickest that I've won a Champions League in any series, which is very surprising given that it's Aberdeen. But the first highlight of the game is upon us. And PSG look to come forward. Hakimi on the ball for him out wide. Gets it to the byline. Puts the ball in the middle. Cleared by Rebuel, who actually, surprisingly, he can play today, given that he's a PSG player. A PSG player in on loan is playing against them. Imagine if he wins it, he won't go back there, a very popular man. I wonder actually, if we lose today, that's a scapegoat. We can blame him. We can blame him if we lose. Was that his fault? I think it was Admilson there. It wasn't his fault, that one. Fuentalba not quite coming out to collect it. Admilson not getting it. A little bit of confusion at the back there. And PSG open up the scoring. I mean, oh, we should have done so much better. In fact, I'd put more blame on Milson there. Ad Milson just stopped tracking him. And now this guy who scored it, uh, Jordi Garnier, he is the best player in the world. He's actually class. Look how good he is. Finishing, not actually that good, but everything else is pretty decent. He's won like the past three or four golden boot and ballon doors and stuff like that. So he's very good. Hopefully though, not good. Hopefully though, not good enough to win as PSG look to come forward again. Mbappe this time on the left. This team is scary good, this PSG team, as Sandro gives away a penalty. Oh, no. No. Sure. 
penalty awarded. Right, Fuentalba. Oh, we need you to come up big time right now as he can't save Mbappe's penalty. Thing is, we've gone defensive. And um, well, it's not working, is it? Uh, and we're not going to score more goals playing defensively like this. So already I'm thinking, let's switch up formations. Unless, of course, Lassie Alien scores immediately. Oh, you love to see it. Okay. Maybe we do stick with the formation just for now. Just, just for now. And to be fair, it's not the formation's fault. A penalty is not the formation's fault. And Ad Milson not tracking his man is not the formation's fault. So maybe actually we, we leave it for now. But we're back in it. Only one goal in this one now. Grab a second and it's all even, obviously, because that, that's how football scores work. As Alien, Jan Cavalcanti, back to Alien. Alien, still on the ball, into Tam McLump, who puts it into La Cruz. La Cruz equalises immediately as well. Oh, we do not change formation. We stick to it. It's 2-2 on the scoreline. We've turned it around and... If we'd just been better, it would be 2-0, not 2-2, but a great goal for us here. You love to see it. Tam Lumpert, Le Cruz, goal. Amazing. Imagine how those two must feel, you know, scoring goals in a Champions League final. I mean, it, you can't imagine the feeling, can you? And these guys are just regens. Imagine if it's a real person in a real game. Looking to build out from the back right now, though. Alexandro into Lassie Alien, who gets it into Jan Cavalcanti. Cavalcanti now into the area. If we make it three, if, if, poor, oh, how have we not scored? We, oh, that was a golden opportunity we should have taken. But we go into the halftime break, 2-2. Fresh, what do I say? Pump fist, hands on hips. Good performance so far. Keep it up. I'm saying that to them. They all look very inspired and motivated. And the game is in the balance. PSG having slightly of the better of it. But we're not out of it at all. At all, we are not out of it. But 25 minutes to go. Free kick. Cavalcanti. Rebool puts it over the bar. Okay, right. I'm noticing Shaban having a poor game. 6.6. .6. Off he comes, and on comes the hero of the semi-final, Thad McRae. Backing you up, my boy. I'm backing you up. Come on, score some goals. That's what we needed to do. Win us a Champions League like you won us the semi-final. That's all I want to see. PSG, though, still coming forward. Ball into the middle. Four was really, really good. And it's just gone over the bar, luckily for us. 20 minutes to go before we have to go into extra time. Passos also having a poor game on a 6.5. Cavalcanti looking very tired, but he's our best player. We've got to leave him on. I'm going to demand more from the team as well, as the long throw to Thad McRae is there. Tam McLumper, Thad McRae. Oh, if that had gone in the back of the net, that would have been absolutely insane. We've actually come back and had more shots than PSG now. But it's going to extra time. Going to extra time. I, I can't believe we've got to a final, let alone extra time in a final. This time I'm going to thrash my arms. Far from pleased of the motivated players. I thought it might work. It usually does, but I have demotivated some players there. Some seem motivated, but the key ones in Jan Cavalcanti and Tam McLumper do look demotivated. Also, Passos might come off. He is arguably our best defender, but he's played poorly. But Portier and Pavlik have got no match sharpness about them. So maybe we leave him on. Maybe Sandro comes off because he's... No, Sandro stays on. He's been solid. Sissoko's not played brilliantly. Simeonov. Let's bring him on. Fresh pair of legs in the middle of the park to run up and down. Do well. Do good. I believe in him. All right. I'm going to say to my attackers... Uh, I'm happy with you in the final third. They look a bit more motivated now. Midfielders, happy with your playmaking efforts. A bit more motivation. Defenders, happy with your defense. So why is that? Why me telling the defenders they played well? Oh, no, I've ruined it. Oh, no, I think I might have ruined it. Am I an idiot? I'm going to demand more from them straight away. Oh, God. I, should, I just should not have said anything. Just leave it as it is, Tom. Don't say anything when you're doing well. Oh, and here come PSG. Although, a good interception from Passos. Hoops it up towards Thad McRae, who I don't think wins it. And it goes to a PSG face instead. La Cruz diving in. Doesn't give away a foul, luckily. Add Milson back to Fuentalba. Right. Build slowly from the back. Slowly. 
It's not quite building slowly, that at all. But we do win possession in the midfield. Le Cruz on the ball. Swamped by PSG players, but does manage to get into the area. Is fouled in the area. Oh, my goodness. Now, I think the referee is deciding if this is going to VAR for penalty or no penalty. That looked in the area. That looked in the area. It looked in the area. Please, referee, tell me this is a penalty. Penalty awarded. Oh, my God. And up steps Jan Cavalcanti on a yellow card. I can't even, I don't think I want to look. I don't know what I'm going to do. Here he comes. Oh, Jan Cavalcanti. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We've got time. We've got time. Oh, if you need to score there as well. Oh, God. That was the chance. That was the chance. Thing is, we're the better team. We, we, look at the stat. Uh, ignore possession, but look at the stats. We are the slightly better team. We can do it. We can do it. I believe in us. <sighs> oh, my God. I can't talk. This is horrible. Of all people, I don't want Jan Cavalcanti to be the one who loses the Champions League final if, if PSG score now. I, ca I can't have that on my conscience. He's a precious wonder kid. One of my favourite ever players, I think, in football manager. He's been absolutely superb. But if he's just missed the penalty, which might cost us the Champions League, then... Mbappe's offside. Mbappe was offside. Ref? No. He was offside. Was he not? Obviously not, apparently. This is going to be so tight. I want to see a replay on this. I really want to see a replay. Come on, show me the replay of the offside. How tight is it? He's offside. He's actually offside. Yeah, I don't think right. I'm, I'll zoom in on editing. I'm because his foot there is on. Because look at the lines. Our player is the red line because that's his foot there, and Mbappe's foot, his front foot is on the yellow line. So that is offside, right? I'm going to let you guys decide. I can't make this call. That seems horrible. That seems so harsh. Right. The thing is, though, we've got to go for it now. Uh, we've really got to go for it. Everyone on to attack. Everyone. Literally everyone on to attack. We've got nothing to lose now. So, you know, we may as well just bloody go for it. Advanced playmaker on attack. Every everyone's on attack, pretty much. It's the one fresh face we can bring on, maybe, to change things up. Maybe a Jez Finley for Le Cruz. But Le Cruz on a 7.8 had a very good game. He's looking tired, though. Let's get him off. Jez Finley on. I don't think I can make any more. So let's confirm that final change. <sighs> Ten minutes to go. I thought this was going to... Oh, please. Don't. Don't. What was that? Jan. Jan Cavalcanti, what was that? Oh, thank goodness they didn't score. If they'd scored, that was it. Game over. And Jan Cavalcanti would be the man to blame in all of this. Free kick for PSG. It's cleared. Everyone racing forward. Thad, you've done it before like this. Please do it again. Into Jan Cavalcanti. Jan Cavalcanti. Tam McLump. Tam McLumper. Come on. Come on! He's done it! He's taken us to penalty shootout! Oh, we could have... The, the tag on the shirt is... Com oh. I, I, oh, this is horrible. Tam McLumper, you beautiful man. The pr Right, no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Good. Good clearance. Fantastic. Can we score a goal? Last the alien. Last the alien coming forward. Oh my god, if we score a goal. Last the alien. In the Oh, he's not going in the middle properly. Oh, imagine if we'd scored then. Right, referee, blow your whistle. Not a card. Just whistle. Blow no.
sit. Like, episode over. I, I go to bed in it. I, good night. I can't, I can't be dealing with that. Oh. If anything, the uh, the full time whistle should have gone. We only had, we only had one minute by the time. He scored him a second minute by the time. The worst bit is the XG. You can see it through my neck, can't you? And let me just get rid of myself quickly. Uh, where where that's me? Look at the XG. PSG's XG is two, and yet ours is three point. Oh, I can't believe it. That is Valencia debacle levels of debacle. But because of the must be worse because of the circumstances. The PSG debacle. The Champions League. I'm, I'm. I can't even bring myself to look at them. Congrats, PSG. You know. Won it. Pavel Kanti still ready to put himself on the spot. What do I think of this man now? I don't know. I love him. I love him, but I can't look at him right now. I can't look at him right. I mean, thirty million pounds is nice. So is two million pounds and fifteen million pounds. Yeah, great. We love the money, but oh, to be that—if we'd lost it four 0 then fair enough, it'd be all right. But to be seconds away, seconds away from a penalty shootout, this hurts. This one really hurts. I thought we, you know, once we got there, I really wanted to win. Oh, by the way, the, the achievement for Invincible has just come through right now, which uh, makes me feel slightly better. Thing is, we, we what a successful season we've had, though. I mean, all the players we've brought in, all the average ratings are well above a 7, which is absolutely mental for all the signings to come in and just play brilliantly straight away. We were unbeaten in the league, which is absolutely phenomenal, whilst filling 99% of our stadium capacity. And Jan Cavalcanti scoring 33 league goals on the way. Matches to remember, a 7-1 Lille, a 6-0 Hamilton, a 4-0 Hamilton. They did actually, the only team to have beaten us, apart from PSG, the only team to have beaten us on penalties this season in the Cup and the, in the Betfred Cup. We've uh, actually lost money in corporate hospitality and match day income, but competition prize money double which is great broadcast of a little bit sponsorship a little bit as well which is lovely to see the team were superb this season very happy with, with every player although Le Cruz apparently despite his nine goals and uh, nine assists and 11 goals only a 6.89 average rating that seems a little bit low record breakers Cowell County's 14 player of the matches McLumper's 17 yellow cards and one red and a new highest transfer fee ever received I've won plenty of awards McLumper with 19 assists, Cavalcanti 44 goals overall. It is a season to be proud of. I just, I just don't feel it right now. Oh, just don't feel it right now. Four of our players in the champion. That's just a bit unfair, I feel. Just for two teams in the final. I'm sure there's other players who have played very well throughout the Champions League, but we'll take our four players in there, I guess. And uh, what's this then? Fuentalbert, second in keeper of the season for the Champions League. Rebel is third, um, and then we've got Yanko Alcanti third in the strikers. So that's it. Season over. We go again next season, as uh, we've been hit with a tax bill uh, of three million, and commercial summary is it's not looking great. How many, what have we got? Sixty million. Our sponsorship is still ridiculously small. Like we have no sponsorship stuff at all, which is really sad, actually. I thought getting to a Champions League final, we might get more. But no, we've just got one new deal worth £650,000 a year. So, great. Oh no, two new deals worth £900,000 a year. Still still not great. Transfer budget not been given to us. Um, and wage budget's gone up. Hugely. But the transfer budget is only £13 million. What's that about? We can't make a oh, we can't make a board real quick, of course, because the bloody embargo's in place. Let's just keep going forward for a few days, see if this embargo gets ended. I've also realised as well. I said I'd give fifty quid to Warchild if um, if if we won the Champions League, 
which does make me now seem like I hate charity because we lost. I don't. Um, so I'll give 50 quid anyway to get the ball rolling on the uh, on the charity deal. So I'd love to see you guys on the stream on Saturday, 1 p.m. UK time, uh, raising money for War Child. Um, I've set a 500 pound target, 10% of the way there already with my contribution. So let's get some money raised. Oh, it's happened. It's happened. Consortium led by Acer. Consortium led by Acer Rolston have completed the takeover of Aberdeen. Excellent. What does this mean then? No, f no further investment made. Oh, brilliant. Why? Just give us some money, please. Just, just give me some money. That's all I want. Club vision is uh, the exact same as it was before. So just accept that current vision. Transfer embargo has been lifted, and uh, whilst we're here, because they've not given us any more transfer budget yet, or any more money in the club balance, can we please finance? We can't ask for more. We can't ask for more transfer budget. Why can't? Why have we not given us more transfer budget? This is bizarre. Give me more money, please. No. Apparently not. I will ask for an affiliate club though, because that'd be quite nice. So, um, weirdly, we head into the transfer window with only 13 million to spend, despite having 56 million in the bank. Uh, I will try and work on that, but this seems very bizarre. I'm not, I'm not happy with it. But we will be back in a couple of days time for the transfer special where we build on the team that we made. We build on the team that we made and, and fingers crossed we can go one step further and win a Champions League next season. But it's going to be so difficult to, to get back there. So thank you ever so much for watching today's episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And of course, if you have done, make sure you do drop a like on the video for me. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and I will see you next time. Have a good one. Goodbye.